Uh, can you see? Yep. Great. Start the broadcast now then. Perfect. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen only mode. Are we ready to go? Hello, it's Rocio. Can anyone hear me? I can hear you now. <laughs> <laughs> I have a new phone system, and when you go to uh, star one, it activates something else. So <laughs> I'm sorry. I apologize. This is the second time I do it. I'm like, oh. Um, I don't, I, I'm guessing everyone can hear me. Hello, everyone. This is Rocio from SAGME. I apologize about that little hiccup. But um, um, thank you all so much for joining us today on our webinar from frazzled to focus and if you can all tell i am very frazzled today so hopefully i can uh, learn a few things from catherine today um catherine graham from common skew is our presenter catherine thank you so much for joining us and for doing this webinar um uh, catherine is the co-founder and ceo of common skew a business and sales software system for promotion for promotional products companies Catherine, again, thank you. Um, if anyone has any questions, uh, we will be answering them towards the end of the webinar. Um, so uh, in the meantime, you can type them into the questions uh, panel, and I'll send them over to Catherine. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. If, there, if you're having any issues hearing me, please uh, type into the chat panel as well, and uh, Rocio will send me a note so I can be aware, but otherwise I will assume volume and pace is all good, and let's get going so we get started on time. So we are here to talk about time management, and I'm sure, as uh, Rocio alluded to, that there are a number of, the, of you that uh, probably feel like this. 
where you have too much on the go, totally overwhelmed, uh, feeling as if you're never going to get on top of whether it's the that pile of paperwork or the pile of emails or whatever else is making you feel kind of loaded down. We are, are living in a always on 24-7 constantly bombarded world that uh, significantly contributes to this feeling. So today what we're going to talk about are three different things. We're going to put these into buckets. We're going to talk about the what, so what you should be doing in your day. And for each of you, you all play you know, different roles, suppliers, distributors, sales, operations, finance, whatever your roles might be in your organizations. Will, you'll determine kind of what your what is that you should be spending your time on, but I'm going to give you some kind of frameworks to think about how you determine uh, what should be in that bucket. We are also going to talk about the when, so in looking at uh, how your days are structured and when are the best times of day for you uh, specifically, in terms of getting things done, we're going to give you some uh, thoughts around that. And the last piece of it where we will spend the most time is on the how, because this is the biggest challenge, is looking at some tools, some tips, some techniques um, that can help you uh, tackle this overall you know, feeling of you know, being frazzled and this, this sense of anxiety and being able to uh, tackle your day in a far more focused and productive way. So without further ado, let's jump into the what. The key component of the, the what is looking at kind of how your day typically shakes out. So you've got your external demands uh, that are coming at you from all different places. You've got your own to-do list, which is what you set out to accomplish you know, that day. And you've got everything that happens in between that can, continue, that can completely throw off that balance of what it was that you wanted to accomplish. So some days, you're juggling like a total rock star, you're multitasking, you've got tons of balls in the air, everything is awesome, and then other days, the, it feels as if you're dropping balls left, right, and center, and feeling completely out of control. The, I'm going to talk about um, an, an, uh, a story of a professor who went to his class with, this, uh, with these um, uh, props essentially. So he had this jar and he had these big rocks and he, and he put all these big rocks into the jar and he held it up to the class and he said, is the jar full? And the class said, yes, it's full. He proceeded to take a whole bunch of small pebbles and he put those pebbles into the jar and of course they fit into all the nooks and crannies in between those big rocks and they filled the jar further. He held up the jar to the, to the group and he said, is it full? And the student said, yes. He then proceeded to take a pile of sand, and he put that sand into the jar, and of course it then filtered in further nooks and crannies in between the big rocks and the small rocks and everything else, and made the jar even more full. He held it up to the group again, and he said, is it full? You'd think they'd have learned by now, but of course they said, yes. And the last piece he did was pour water into the jar. And uh, of course that filled it even further. This analogy is usually used to speak to the fact that you can always fit more into your day, that there's always room for more in your day. I want to speak to this from the opposite perspective, that if you look at how it is that, look at what these things represent to you. The big rocks are the things that are, are the strategic things that you need to be accomplishing on a given day in order to move your business forward and be more successful in your role to accomplish the those big strategic things. The smaller rocks and the sand and the water are all the things that get in the way to fill up the time in between. And what happens if you don't plan for those big rocks first is that all the other things fill up the jar and there's no room for the big rocks. If there is nothing else that you take away from this webinar today, I want you to remember this visual and what you think about how it is that you structure your day to make sure that you are always making room for those big rocks first before everything else gets in the way and fills up all the space so that there is no room left. So let's think about how that, uh, that actually gets accomplished and identifying you know, what those big rocks are. So the big part about this is actually planning. And if you don't really know what it is that you want to be accomplishing from a strategic perspective, you haven't actually sat down and thought about what those big rocks are, your jar will continually just be full of the little rocks and the sand and the, and the water. And often you know, we can spend our day in our inbox and feeling as if we're you know, making great progress because we're knocking lots of emails out and we're 
are feeling really productive and that we're getting a lot done. But ultimately, it isn't necess we aren't, aren't necessarily working on the things that are really going to propel us forward. So we aren't uh, working on those big rocks. So the first thing to do is actually identify those big rocks. And the way in which uh, makes this actually um, more feasible in a day that is inevitably filled with little rocks and sand and water and everything else is to actually choose just one rock that you're going to get accomplished in a given day. Choose the one thing that you are going to do and identify this as what we call a non-negotiable. So no matter what happens in a day, you are going to get this one thing accomplished no matter what. What you will find as you start getting into this rhythm is that after you have identified that initial thing, you will start to be able to add more into that, uh, that list each day. So you'll have more rocks that you're getting accomplished in a given day, more things that are on your non-negotiables list, and therefore accomplishing you know, greater things from a strategic perspective as opposed to just the, the everyday things. So start off with just identifying that one thing, and it can be small, but it's a, a thing that ultimately is something that is more strategic to your role, to your business, that is really going to help propel you forward. With identifying this one thing, the key to making this successful is actually allocating time to be able to plan for what that one thing is. So either do that at the end of the day before you leave, spend just five minutes before you're walking out the door to write down what your non-negotiable is for the following day, or do it first thing in the morning when you get in, before you open your inbox, before you listen to your voicemail, before you get going with your day. Whether Whichever time period you choose to do, make sure you do it. What is that one thing that you are going to get done for that day so that when the day begins, you have ensured that you've got that non-negotiable front and center and that you get it accomplished no matter what else comes to interrupt you through the day. The, with making these non-negotiables something that is realistic, you need to actually break them down. Let's just say, for example, you know, one of your big things that you want to get accomplished is to land a new client. Well, putting on your list, land new client, as a thing to start your day off with is going to make that seem very daunting and make it incredibly simple for you to procrastinate and say, no, I don't have time to get that done today. I'm going to push that to the bottom and everything else is going to fill up my day first. So take that objective that you want to accomplish and break it down into something smaller. So with landing a new client, as an example, maybe the first task in that is to do some research on LinkedIn to identify who the people are that you might know at that company. That's something that is a, a reasonable chunk to bite off. It means that it's a, a rock that you can actually fit into the jar as opposed to feeling you know like there's this enormous boulder that you're never going to be able to move. Take that boulder and break it down into rocks that are actually managed manageable to fit into the jar so you can get things accomplished um, in a day. So as I mentioned, that, that what, in terms of what it is that you should be spending your day on, what comprises your boulders, your rocks, your big rocks, your strategic objectives, it's going to be different for every one of you and specific to your role. So the key thing is to make sure that you've actually spend some time identifying what those rocks are and plan for them such that they are your non-negotiables that you're going to get accomplished in a given day. So you're thinking, great. That's, that's fine that I, I will uh, identify that, but when am I going to fit this in? My days are crazy, I'm constantly interrupted, how is this even possible? So let's talk about the when. There are three different things that you need to think about when you are identifying you know, what those, um, how you're going to tackle those rocks. You're looking at how much time is it going to take to get something done? How much energy is it going to require to be able to accomplish that rock? And what's the priority in the grand scheme of things in terms of everything else that you have on your plate? So let's speak specifically to the time. The, when, you've, when you have identified what that non-negotiable, what that rock is for the day, allocate how much time is going to take. If it's something that is small, such as you know, going on to LinkedIn and identifying who some key contacts are that you might know at a company, that's something that, that realistically you can knock out in five to ten minutes just doing a quick search on LinkedIn. So that's your non-negotiable, first thing in the morning, get it done before the day happens. If the rock that you are trying to accomplish is something that is more significant than that, maybe it's something that's going to take 20 minutes or half an hour, or maybe even longer than that, an hour or two, block off time, the time in your day, for what that is actually going to take, and treat that as being non-negotiable. As the same way that you would never you know, miss a client meeting or you know, drop something that is important as that, 
have that same respect for yourself in that if you have blocked off a time to do to work on something that is going to be significant to moving you forward in your role or your business then treat that as equally as important as you would treat a client meeting so hold that that um, time is being not negotiable you can't move it you can't change it and you know, buckle down and, and get the work done during that time period block it off in your calendar set a meeting request with yourself and uh, treat it as non-negotiable the energy component of this. So if you are t undertaking a task that is going to require some energies, whether it's some creative energy, whether it's some, uh, you know, you've got some budgeting work to do, something that you need some uninterrupted time to be able to work on, think about what is the best time of day where you can achieve something called flow. And what flow is, is getting into a rhythm in your mind that allows you to be able to really get in the zone to accomplish something. So this is especially important for people who are in creative roles, whether that's brainstorming products, whether you're in a marketing role, um, something that requires you to actually get in that creative mindset, that setting aside a chunk of time where you can actually get in that zone and be uninterrupted is critical to actually getting that, uh, that rock accomplished. So think about you know, what is um, specifically you yourself from a personality perspective, what is the best time of day for you, when are you freshest? You know, maybe you're a morning person, maybe you're a night owl, maybe you find kind of that time right after lunch where it's a bit of a lull that that's the best time for you to be able to get into the zone. Look within yourself to be able to identify when is the time when you feel that you have the most energy and plan for that, uh, that big rock accordingly during that time period. For me, my magic window is five to seven in the morning. That's my period of total zen. I've got three little kids. They're still asleep during that time period. I've got completely un an uninterrupted window where I have no meetings, no phone calls coming in, no, no emails coming in, nothing interrupting me. And I can spend that time focused on uh, important strategic work that has, to get, uh, that has to get done. So that just happens to be what works for me, as I say. Think about uh, you individually and when is your best time of the day and identify that and just know that if your rock that you have to get accomplished for the day is something that is going to require you to get into flow and to be able to really dedicate some uninterrupted time to that, plan that time for when you are going to be freshest. So that's the when. So we've talked about the how, we've talked about the when, and as I mentioned, the majority of the time we're going to spend, uh, sorry, we talked about the, the when and the what, the majority of time that we're going to spend uh, for the rest of our time today is on the how, because this is the really critical part of actually getting, getting this, this stuff done. So first up, this is a productivity tip. Once you touch it, take action. Don't set the task aside for later. We are going to speak to this within the context of a, a productivity tool called the Touch It Once principle. And this uh, correlates to a second thing we're going to talk about being the two minute rule. Well, I'll speak about the Touch It Once principle first. I'm going to speak to this within the context of email, but this actually applies to anything else that you uh, that uh, you have on the go as well. But email specifically seems to be the bane of most people's existence these days. So we'll talk about the Touch It Once principle within the context of your inbox. So I know if I could see you all right now and would ask for a raise of hands that probably the majority in the, in the room would put their hands up to this question. The most people are guilty of opening an email, taking a look at it, reading it and thinking, oh, I just, I don't have time to deal with that right now. I'm going to deal with that later. And so they close the email, they get on with, you know, the next email or whatever they were doing. And, you know, an, an hour later, they open up that email again and you read it and you think, oh, I, I still don't have time to do that. And that action gets repeated multiple times on that same email to the point where that email starts going further and further down the inbox and the anxiety increases as that email gets further down because you realize that it's something that has to get done and you just haven't made the time for it. In that period of opening that email multiple times, you have lost an incredible amount of time cumulatively when you think about the fact that you are doing that to multiple emails a day, multiple times a day. All of that adds up to an enormous amount of time when you look at it cumulatively across a day, a week, a month, a year. This is probably one of your single biggest losses of productivity overall in your day. 
And implementing this touch at once principle is actually one of the hardest things to do. But if you can do it and have the discipline to do it, I guarantee it will totally change how much time you are spending in your inbox and will give you back a significant amount of valuable time in your day. So the way the touch at once principle works is open the email and make a decision on it. If it's going to take you less than two minutes to deal with the email, do it then. If it's going to take you more than two minutes, identify what is the action that you have to take on that email. The key thing is that you are making a decision in that moment in time and you are then filing that email, you're archiving it until you are, if, 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 you, if it requires something longer than two minutes, you are archiving it and you are not pulling it up again until you have actually allocated the time to tackle that next action on it. So touch it once, deal with it, either respond, forward, do whatever the action is if it's going to take less than two minutes, or write down what the next action is and, and schedule that to be done. I know that's probably giving all of you kind of hives, just thinking about that, on, that idea of archiving an email before you've actually dealt with it, but I guarantee you that if you've identified what that next action is, then you will be able to, in good conscience, archive that email knowing that you will pull it up when the time comes that you are actually going to deal with that. So once you identify what the next action is, prioritize it. Are you going to do it now or are you going to do it later? If you're going to do that action later, when are you going to do it? So schedule it. If it is something, if knowing that that, you know, that email that came in is from a client who needs a presentation that you've got to think about, some you know, products, you've got to reach out to some suppliers, you've got to think about you know, what those, was, those elements are that you have to, to get done, then identify what the next action is on there and put it on your to-do list or put it on your calendar or whatever your mechanism is for making sure that that is on your radar. File that email until the time comes that you're going to pull it up again. So touch it once, two minute rule if you can get it done, and then identify the next action if it's longer than two minutes. One of the most challenging things for us as human beings is that we are very prone to procrastination. It is far easier to put off making a decision than to do it right now. So as I mentioned in terms of your big takeaways from this, this uh, webinar, that if one of them is that visual of the jar with the rocks, the second one I want you to remember is this acronym, JFTI, just flippin' do it. <laughs> Insert whatever you want as that F word in there. If you feel like uh, being a little bit more uh, nuanced with the expl expletive, go ahead. But the key thing is in all this is that take action, make a decision on what it is that you have to do coming out of that email. So if it's, you know, responding and it requires, uh, you know, a thought that's going to, you can literally get done within two minutes, be decisive, respond, get it done, as opposed to thinking, oh, I got to think about that, I'll do it later, do it now. Or if it's going to take longer than two minutes and you got to identify what that next action is, identify the next action, write it down, do it now, make a decision. If you can increase your overall decisiveness in terms of how it is that you handle things that are coming across your plate, again, it will give you back a gift of time and they'll repay itself in uh, so many more fold than you can imagine. So JFDI. There is a, uh, a long-standing myth that has been prevailing uh, for a long time about the fact that we are fabulous multitaskers. I can guarantee you if there are any of you that are listening to this webinar right now and you are also trying to look at your email or respond to something coming in or write some things down to do with the project that you're working on or something else that is occupying your brain, guarantee you have missed what I've just heard and what I've just said in the past, uh, in the past 20 minutes. Our brain, it has been demonstrated through studies that have been done over and over in the past decade. It has been demonstrated that our brain is incapable of doing two things at the same time. It must focus on one thing at a time. And even though you feel as if you are doing something you know, else in the background, your mind is focused on one thing at a time. So if you are listening to this webinar and you are responding to an email at the same time, guaranteed your mind is on that email and half your brain is listening to the webinar but you're not actually taking in what's being said. So let's demyth this idea of multitasking and focus on the fact that the brain is only capable of doing one thing at a time. What this means is that you, you need to actually do something called single tasking. So this is the new mantra, multitasking is out, single tasking is in, and what this means in terms of how it impacts your day 
is that you have to actually plan your day around this so that you aren't trying to juggle too many things at once. The reason why this has been proven scientifically is there is something that is called context switching. When you switch from doing one thing to another, your brain has to actually switch gears in order to be able to accomplish that, uh, that move from one thing to another. So if you go from, uh, as an example, say so you're working on that you know, presentation that we spoke about earlier, you're in that zone of thinking about creative ideas, you're brainstorming, you're, your brain is kind of in that mode of thinking about interesting things that you can uh, put together to send to your client. And all of a sudden, you know, the, the notification goes off in your email box and you switch to go and look at that email. You switch contexts from working on that presentation to going and looking at that email. Your brain changes tasks. It starts focusing in on the email. Your brain it switches. You're now thinking about, you know, what is in that email, what you're going to get done on it, and you've lost the flow that you had about working on that presentation. When it comes time that you're now going to switch back to working on that presentation, your brain has to play catch up. It's got to have a little bit of time to be able to get back in the zone to think about where were you and you know, what, what was the last product that you were working on, what was that idea that you thought of that's now gone from your mind. You're playing catch up to get back into that zone of working on those presentations again and you've lost precious, precious time by doing that. So the key with this notion of single tasking is to do one thing at a time and stay focused on that task until you actually complete it. Where some of the uh, tools have come around this, there is a guy that invented something that he called the Pomodoro Technique. And the reason why it is called this is he actually took an old-fashioned kitchen timer, like the one that you're seeing on the screen here, and the ones that turn and makes that tick, 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 tick noise as this counting down. His was an actual Pomodoro tomato that he was using uh, for his kitchen timer, uh, or a Pomodoro shaped tomato, a kitchen timer. Uh, so that is the reason why he called this the Pomodoro technique. And his whole notion behind this is that you allocate how much time you're going to spend single tasking on something. You set the timer to make sure that you focus exclusively on that task and you stay working on that task only until the time is up or until you complete it. So this means that you are not context switching during this time period. You, so if you're working on this presentation for a client, you close your email down, uh, remove any other distractions, and you are focused exclusively on working on that presentation for the time that you have allocated. And that can be whatever time you, uh, you think is appropriate for um, that specific task that needs to get accomplished. But the key is to set the proverbial timer. You don't have to use an actual timer. You can do this in whatever method um, you want. But set the proverbial timer for that time period and stay on task until you actually get this done. There has been a huge amount of literature written on this topic around kind of productivity and around um, you know how to to stay you know on task and focused. And really, one of the gurus in this space is someone by the name of David Allen. He wrote a book uh, many years ago called Getting Things Done. And there is actually an entire you know, cult that is developed around this. <laughs> There's an acronym in this space for those that are you know the productivity geeks called GTD. You'll see things referred to as you know, the GTD method or, oh, that's so GTD. So if you want to, you know, be in the know and be able to hang with the productivity geeks, just uh, know that acronym and, and throw it out there and, and people will, uh, will think you're, you're in the know. So David Allen wrote this book and I would highly recommend reading it. It's a quick read. The, you'll have to um, transport you know, what it is that he has outlined as some you know, actual tools for getting these things done into the digital age. So he had things, he references his uh, Palm Pilot as an example. He uh, uses something called you know, Tickler files, which is those, those old accordion folders that you can uh, you know, file papers in. So take what he's uh, outlining from a concept perspective and apply it to you know, whatever more new age techniques um, you use to be able to accomplish these things. But essentially there are uh, five different things that he outlines as part of his overall technique. The first is this idea of collection. And what this refers to is the fact that um, there are what he calls, refers to as, as loops, endless loops that are cycling around your brain. And what this means is that, you know, you're standing in the grocery store aisle and you remember the fact that you've got to work on that presentation for your client the next day and you want to make sure that you don't forget it. So that thing, that, that attempt for your brain to remember the fact that you have to work on that presentation is cycling through in a loop until you can actually 
actually you know write it down or get the presentation done or whatever is going to remove that from constantly looping through your brain exactly the same thing applies that when you're sitting at your desk working on that presentation and all of a sudden it pops in your mind that you have to remember to buy milk on the way home that that is going to cycle through your brain until you you know write it on your hand or put a sticky note on your keys or whatever is going to be the mechanism for remembering that you have to buy milk on the way home his whole mantra is that all these endless loops that are constantly cycling through your brain create an enormous amount of anxiety and that the you know, tension that tension that li that lives kind of in you is this that your brain's you know constant d desire to kind of keep these things cycling through until you remember to do them and so therefore you feel anxious because you've got these things cycling through your brain you feel anxious because there's this feeling as if you've got this endless you know list of stuff that has to get done so by this going through this collection process is actually writing down all the things that are potentially cycling through your brain and he actually has a list in the book of all the potential things that these could be so it could be everything from things that you have to get done for work it could be things that have to get done around the house it could be trips that you want to take it could be anything kind of crossing both your personal life and your professional life but the idea is to actually go through this list and think about and write down all the things that are possibly cycling through your brain once you've gone through that collection process and you've actually you know removed them from those endless loops and you've written them down the next process the next uh, step is to actually process them so go through and you know break down the big boulders into more manageable rocks uh, think about what those actually translate to in term, into tasks that will actually get those things done to get them off your list so process them to make them something more achievable and then organize them how are you going to prioritize what it is that needs to get done? How do you make sure that you are, are you know, having things rise to the top that are going to be the most impactful and meaningful and that you're constantly reviewing that list, which is the next stage, to make sure that you're reevaluating um, what the priority is because those things are going to constantly change and you're going to be constantly adding to this list as well. And the last piece is the JFDI of this. Just do it. Get it done. Get it off your list. Make yourself feel as if you are, you know, making progress on these um, bigger things, um, but that you've also kind of rid your brain of the anxiety of trying to remember the smaller things that might not be as important right now. So David Allen, getting things done. Highly recommend um, the read on that. Let's talk about some actual tools. So in the modern age of things that are, uh, are mobile friendly that can help you with this effort to keep yourself organized and to, to get stuff done. There are two apps that I'm going to speak about here specifically. One is called To Do. Um, so spelled T-E-U-X, D-E-U-X, and both of these, um, both this and Remember the Milk, are apps that can live on your phone, but that are also what are called browser-based, so meaning that you can have, you know, a browser open on your, your desktop while you're sitting in the office, and you can also have that same information available to you in your app on the phone. What this gives you is the ability to use this as your collection process for writing down all the things that are on your task list and keeping it um, organized in a way that is with you all the time. So that when you're standing you know, in that grocery aisle and you think about that presentation that you have to get done for your client, this gives you a mechanism to be able to capture that in the moment so you can get it off, you know, cycling through that, through that loop in your brain. Both of these apps are um, have got some different functionality to them, so uh, you could give each of the ones a try and see what's going to work best for you. To do is laid out in a more kind of day format, so it's got you know Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday um, written out, and you're writing kind of specific task lists on those days. It will then move forward to the next day, whatever you haven't um, accomplished off your list from the previous day, which can be helpful um, because those of you who are uh, like to use paper books, you'll find that you know once you turn the page and then finding yourself copying out your list all over again so it's helpful with being able to you know, carry that forward but what it also means is that it's carrying it forward to the point where if you aren't actually getting things done then your list is going to start to become um, pretty pretty unwieldy so it's um, a good layout kind of from a calendar perspective to be able to see that and um, whereas remember the milk is more organized kind of based on projects so you can have different buckets that you have going on I've got you know one for work I've got one for home uh, one for long term um, then you can have your task list within that that are all identified or attached to a specific day in which you're going to accomplish them and that then organizes itself um, in order based on the day that you've allocated it I use Remember the Milk um, specifically because it has something called a, um, a Google Gadget. 
say that three times fast. It's actually a, a widget that sits, if you are um, users of uh, Google Apps for, um, for your email, it sits next to your email window and shows you the little list of all the things that you have allocated for today and tomorrow. So I find having this front and center right next to me while I'm in my inbox is incredibly helpful to make sure that I have my non-negotiables front and center and that they don't get set aside um, by using the, the urgent at the expense of the important with uh, whatever comes through in the inbox during the day. So those are two apps that you can uh, give a try. Here are a few other ones. So these are more specifically around being able to organize um, things that you want to read. So I'm an avid reader of you know, blogs and articles and interesting things that are constantly being published on the web. I find often those uh, were previously coming to me via you know a newsletter that I was receiving in in my inbox, and it would fall you know prey to the same challenge of uh, you know the email that you open multiple times because you know that you have to actually set aside some time where you can digest you know what is in that email that you're going to what's in that newsletter that you want to read and if you're you know in that mode of your brains jumping all over the place you pull up that interesting blog post and you get one paragraph into it and you get distracted by something else and when you try and get back to it you're rereading the same paragraph over and again so what these tools allow you to do is to be able to kind of aggregate all the different you know blogs or things that you follow into um, one area where you can read them at a time when you can be more focused uh, so Feedly is specifically an aggregator that you can bring all your subscriptions into to be able to read at once. Um, Pocket allows you to be able to, if you're on um, a web page where you're you're reading a specific article and you want to come back to that, um, the only you know, mechanism that you have right now is either leave your browser window open or you know email yourself a, a link to it so that you can um, you'd be able to remember it for later. Um, or in this case, what Pocket does is it allows you to actually put that article in your pocket, so to speak, to be able to to read for later. So it's a little um, you know, widget essentially that sits uh, on the browser that you can click to be able to add that um, link to your pocket. The last one, Instapaper, is one that allows you to read um, online articles offline. So it essentially takes you know, blogs and, and uh, whatever else you, you might have um, uh, put, it, put into your Instapaper and it takes them into an offline environment. I find this hugely helpful for traveling. So if you're, you know, on a plane and you want to be able to um, to get through a bunch of backlog of reading that you're interested in uh, getting caught up on, this gives you an offline environment to be able to do that. So three just tools to be able to um, help with uh, keeping organized on um, on things that you want to be be reading. This is uh, a fun one that's the last kind of tool that I'm going to talk about um, is something called Rescue Time. This is something that you can install on your browser and what it does is it actually monitors how it is that you are spending your time. Uh, you can actually you can train it to know. It, I mean, it's it's a pretty smart application in terms of knowing you know what is email versus uh, you know what are diff, what are social media websites versus uh, what are other things that you're uh, you're spending your time on. Um, but it basically tracks how it is that you're spending your time in uh, in a given day and gives you a sense of overall productivity based on um, again you can train it. So if you're in marketing, spending time on social media is a big part of your job. So you can train it uh, around that, and the it can also give you a sense as to how your productivity is performing kind of over um, the course of a given week. So you see in the top left hand area here it's showing kind of which days you are most productive or least productive on. It's a uh, it's a bit a bit a little bit gimmicky, but I think that it can provide some interesting insight because you may find that in using this that you are spending your time in areas that are spending more time in areas that you were, were did not were not expecting. So rescue time is uh, is the name of that. The um, other piece in this that I'm uh, uh, going to well, uh, finish off with two things here, one of which is something called the inverse productivity curve. And this is something I just want you to be aware of. This is uh, something that gets spoken about a lot in the software world because it's actually been studied that developers, as they go about kind of working on code, they will reach a certain point in time of working on a specific project where their overall accuracy declines. So if they're you know pulling an all-nighter and they're you know coding away at you know midnight or two in the morning, they are far more likely to introduce bugs into code at that stage versus earlier on in the workday. So there's actually a point in time that you pass over where you are becoming actually less productive than you would be kind of earlier in the day. So it's called the inverse productivity curve. So next time you get this 
temptation to, you know, open up your computer, you know, after you're settled at home and you're finished dinner and just, you know, knock out a few things that you've got to get done. Recognize that it might actually take you more time to get those things done at that time of day when your brain is kind of tired and yeah, you really need to take a, a rest. That uh, leaving those tasks in the morning when you're fresher, you could actually get, might be able to get them accomplished a lot faster by doing it then. So that's the, the concept of the inverse productivity curve. So just be aware of kind of your limitations that, you know, work can expand to fill the time and it's really important to be able to take some breaks and kind of rest and recharge in order to actually be more productive. Which leaves us with this last piece, which is mindful or mindful. The, uh, the, we only get, you know, one shot on this merry-go-round of, of life and if you're spending all your time feeling totally frazzled and anxious because you've got, you know, a million different things, you know, constantly circling around in your mind, if you can, you know, accomplish a little bit of, kind of zen out of being able to, you know, use some of the techniques we've talked about to kind of get yourself more organ organized and, you know, prioritize around that, that take a page out of the life of a dog where they have this uh, incredible ability to just empty their mind and live in the moment and experience the moment as they're going through it. So take the time to be able to, you know, to rest, recharge, to give some space to your brain. There are, you know, a lot of studies that show that, you know, with creativity, I mean, we work in a creative industry that, uh, you know, with creativity and, um, and things that are going to be kind of, you know, uh, breakthrough ideas that you need to have some open space both proverbial, literally and figuratively uh, in your mind to, to be able to um, think of those things and come up with you know, new ideas and fresh ideas. So it's really important to make sure that you are scheduling you know, time in, the, in all your busy lives to, uh, to rest and recharge so that you can, um, can be as, as fresh as possible. So that's the last thing that I will leave you with. Um, I've left a bunch of time for uh, questions at the end. So uh, Russ, you're not sure if anything has come through yet uh, with questions, but feel free to shoot those over. Yeah, I do have a question um, here from Kevin. I'll just forward it to you right now. Um, or feel free to read it out. Okay. Um, yeah, he was just interested in the names of the apps, books, and tools, but uh, did not have time to write them all down. So I don't know if you could uh, kind of go back and give yeah. us the name of the app. Mm -hmm. For sure. So the two apps that were on the product, let's go back here, um, was To Do. So T E U X, D E U X was the one. And remember, the milk was the second one. Okay. And um, I think the, also some books and tools. Yep. As well. yep. So mm -hmm. the, book, the book was David Allen's getting things done. Okay. Right. And then the other ones from a tools perspective were these ones, so Feedly, mm -hmm. Pocket, and Instapaper. Okay. And the fun one for the monitoring was Rescue Time. I like that one a lot. <laughs> um, and then I just sent you another question that someone asked uh, from Christy. Um, I just so sent it you, over to you. How do you put these into practice when uh, response time is is expected to be immediate? And <laughs> so if you don't get uh, if you don't respond within ten minutes, you get paged or tracked down. So there's constant interruptions. I totally understand that uh, that is that is a reality of of a lot of our days. And I think that um, if knowing that that is kind of what the reality is of your specific role or workplaces, then make sure when you're actually thinking about how to break down your tasks into something manageable that you're going to have to put them into even tighter um, time periods. So maybe five minutes is the most that you can allocate to, um, you know, a specific rock to get it done. So think about how you can actually, you know, get those boulders into even smaller pieces to be able to accomplish those during kind of bite-sized windows. And um, think about how to kind of squeeze those in. If there's also, you know, any flexibility around um, just in terms of with, you know, response time expectation of being able to, you know, rotate that. If you're in a team that, uh, you know, someone is on, on call for a specific time period while another person is able to dedicate, you know, half an hour to something, you know, uninterrupted, that, that I don't know whether that's an alternative, um, but something that, uh, you know, thinking about, you know, more flexible ways of being able to have some, you know, uninterrupted focused time. Thank you, Catherine. And then um, I just sent you another question. I'm going to send you another one here from Racy. 
Um, so when filing, two okay. Mm -hmm. So when when filing emails for later, um, how do you recommend filing the emails to be efficient of handling them later? The for. Um, for those that use Gmail, it's incredibly powerful in terms of search. So when I moved over to Gmail, I actually don't use folders anymore. So um, it's simply archiving them and searching it specifically. In order to be able to make that more efficient, when you are actually writing the task down of what it is that you have to accomplish or the reason why you are pulling that email back up to begin with, make sure you're putting something in the task that is going to help you jog your memory for how to search for it. So if, as an example, it's a request from a client um, to put together you know, ideas for a presentation, um, you know, put down in your note who the specific contact was for the client. That way you can quickly search your email for that contact to be able to pull up that email quickly. Um, there's also uh, you know ways of you know tagging or different uh, ways of filing if that's an an easier way um, of handling that for you. But I find that you know search has just become so much more powerful that you know using folders and categories and stuff can uh, can sometimes be more time consuming than purely just searching that email directly via the name of the sender or the subject line that was in the of the email. Thank you, um, Linda wants to know if you can just uh, show the second. Screen, um, the one with the websites. She just wants to have a quick look at that again. That one, yeah. or yeah. Uh, yeah, those are the ones. Okay. So you're welcome, Linda. Um, any further questions, anyone? And if you do have questions, I mean, uh, you can send me an email with your questions. Um, I'll start an app that you were curious about um, or for Catherine's yeah. contact information, here it is. Yeah, so feel, um, feel free to contact me directly with any questions, I'm happy to answer those. Okay, wonderful. So and, we yeah. have give, um, you've been given back here a gift of 15 minutes of time. So think about the fact that you guys allocated an hour to this and we finished up a little bit early. So take that time to actually sit down and write out a few non-negotiables that you're going to get done tomorrow or today. And think about kind of what those rocks are within your specific role and how it is that you can be moving those forward. Wonderful, great, great idea for today. Thank you so much, Catherine, for that. Um, and again, thank you for joining us, everyone. Thank you for taking your time, for allocating this time to this educational webinar. I'll be doing some, you know, notes and uh, checking out my rocks <laughs> for today. <laughs> um, and again, if you guys feel uh, you need to contact us, you have our contact information here. Um, I'm Rocio. Thank you again for joining us, and uh, catch you next time. Have, have a great have day, everyone. Day. My pleasure. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. -bye.